What does it mean to be transgender? Does anyone here know the answer to that question? No one here has heard of a transgender person before. <laughs> or are you just worried that this scary trans person in this stupid outfit is going to point at you and call you transphobic and cancel you? OK. Yeah, let's, let's say I do pick on you, and you don't know what to say, and then you freeze up and you go, uh, it's, it's, it's when you identify as the other gender, except that not, not that there are two genders, and not that you're not that gender that you identify with, and it's not that... Does that make you transphobic if you answer like that? No, of course not. In fact, you're desperately trying not to offend me here, so I wouldn't feel offended, genuinely. Is anyone in this room actually transphobic? No one. It does not offend me, but it just makes me go, oh, God. Because people are terrified of this topic. And more importantly, they don't really understand. God, if only there was just a trans person out there who's willing to explain everything to you in a, a way that made you no longer terrified. <laughs> God. It is I, the woke Gen Z, here to stop you boomers from getting cancelled. <laughs> Fear not, for on my next slide, there will be the perfect definition of what it means to be transgender, you will no longer be confused. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. There is no perfect definition of what it means to be transgender, which is annoying, but that's because it's sort of something just psychological. I can't exactly explain it to you. When it comes to being gay, you understand what that means because, well, most of you can relate to the experience of being attracted to someone. So you can go, oh, yeah, that's like how I feel with women, but like with dudes, yeah, I get it. <laughs> but when it comes to being transgender, you don't, you don't understand it because you can't really relate it to yourself. You go, I don't know, it's when you want to like, change your sex or something. But why? And it's just really a feeling. You can't put feelings into words. So, OK, how does almighty Google define this impossible challenge, then? Denoting to or relating to a person whose gender identity does not correspond with the sex registered for them at birth. That's helpful. <laughs> OK, so let me pick that apart. Sex. Sex is what your body is physically. And my sex is male. And this sex, the reason it says registered at birth is because you can have surgeries that can change your body later on. But you probably already knew that. What you're wondering is, is what is gender identity? And more importantly, how does your gender identity differ to your sex? That doesn't make sense. How can you identify with something that isn't your body? OK, let's just say for a second that a mad scientist went up to you and went, hey, do you want to switch brains with a cat? And then you're like, hell yeah, why not? <laughs> and then he straps you down in this chair, and there's lightning, and then, oh my god, I'm a cat. And then maybe about five minutes later, the novelty of being a cat sort of gets old, and you just sort of sat there going, oh, OK. I'm a cat. But you still have a human brain. And your human brain is wired to control a human body. And it has a subconscious idea of what that human body looks like. And then you look down, and you see two cat paws and a cat body and a tail. And your human brain doesn't recognize that as your body. 
And that just feels weird and disorienting and wrong. And you try and say to the scientist, hey, can you switch me back? I don't like this. But all that comes out of your mouth is just meow, <laughs> because you don't even sound like yourself anymore. And whenever a person goes up to you and goes, oh, look at the little cat, you go, hey, I'm not a cat, I'm a person. And you feel a little sad that, you, that they don't understand who you are. OK, now let's say that this time the scientist is evil and is running a morally ambiguous experiment where he swaps your brain and the cat's brain at birth. And he doesn't tell you or the cat. Now, what would that feel like for you? You're not told about this, this experiment. For all you know, you're a cat. You're brought up as a cat, you behave as a cat, and you believe that you are a cat. And that's how you live. You may chase pieces of string and scratch sofas and meow outside someone's door only to not actually come in when they open it. But you're only doing that because that's what all of the other cats around you are doing. What your human brain wants to do is to, I don't know, crack open a cold one with the lads and watch a match of footy. But the thought of doing that doesn't even occur to you because that's not a thing that cats do. In fact, there's a whole load of human activities that you want to do that you don't even know about because you're not even giving yourself the chance to think about them. And you just look at the other cats around you and you just wonder why they're so content with chasing bits of string all day. Why they're so content with being cats in the first place. And why you just feel different and you don't know why. And you just feel like there's a part of you missing. And whenever anyone goes up to you and goes, aw, look at the little cat, you go, yeah, I'm a cat. And you just feel a little sad that you don't understand who you are. You don't feel like a cat. You don't feel like a person. Do you feel like a person right now? You just don't feel like a cat. And for your whole life, you've had this same strange feeling of something feeling weird and disorienting and wrong, but you just have no idea why. And you can't put your finger on it. For your whole life, you've just felt wrong. This is what it's like to be transgender. I didn't choose the fact that I was trans, and no one does. It took me years to realize, and years once I did to accept it. And this strange feeling that trans people get from their body not matching their mind is called dysphoria. And I realize that's a hard word to spell, so that's how you spell it. But this feeling can significantly impact trans people's lives. But the last thing that I want you to leave this thinking is that, oh my god, being trans is awful, and it's so bad, I should feel bad for every single trans person, even without transphobia, it's so hard, because that would just make you even more afraid of this topic. Being transgender is not bad. It's not a bad thing. In fact, it's a beautiful thing. I would not change the fact that I'm trans. And I have formed such deep connections with people who are experiencing the same thing as I have. And there's such a positive trans community out there. And no, it doesn't just make you feel bad. Yes, this feeling of dysphoria can be bad, but Likewise, when you finally feel like yourself, that can be an amazing feeling. That can come from, from wearing an outfit that makes you feel like yourself, or speaking in a voice that makes you feel like you, or just something as tiny as someone else referring to you by the correct pronoun. That can genuinely make a trans person's day. And that's why it's really important. And <laughs> look, that's what matters. If you don't, still don't get what it means to be transgender, that's all right, because it's confusing. And genuinely, you don't need to. All you need to do is respect trans people. So maybe instead of asking, what does it mean to be transgender, how about just, OK, 
how do these trans people want to be treated? Thank you. <laughs>